period that we have been through, which flies in the face of history, that has allowed us to flourish to the level we are right now, the changes in the world that have happened in the last 50 years that have blossomed into so many things, it's hard. We have serious problems to solve. But I think the people in 1939 had really begun, and yet 24% of the applicants were women. We were only going to choose two. So the odds are you wouldn't even choose and just because of the cultural inertia of the society that has brought us to this level. And you can, you can scream at it, that doesn't really help. It's brought us to a very high level of success, but that doesn't mean that it's going to stop changing. And it, it really rests with each of us to recognize that things are going to change. And this is an important time to deliberately start to make some of those changes. As you mentioned, I've heard it helped enable the tremendous success you've had as a person to have some of those programs that maybe shifted our societal norm a little bit. And we can't afford to waste our human capital. The brightest people in the world are probably not growing up in a society that enables them to take advantage of their abilities. And that's a shame. You know, if Henry the Navigator had been born in another part of the world, he would never have done what he'd done, or, or Elon Musk, or whoever you want to choose out of history. And so, I think each of us, number one, needs to make the most of ourselves. That that obligation is yours. We're at 60 degrees below zero, where you can't grow food, where you can't do anything. It's completely inhospitable to humans, and yet 11 million people do that every single day in virtually complete comfort and complete safety because of our application of technology. And it's not much of a step from there to putting a habitat on the moon. And we just chose these two aspects. We chose Josh Kittrick and Jenny Sidey. Jenny is a rock star of a human being. She, she is, has a PhD in mechanical engineering. She was, one of, she was a professor at Cambridge at 28 years old. She's on the national rugby team. You know, just another Canadian kid. But, uh, <laughs> but I think that Canada, because of our commitment to the World Space Program, to be part of that exploration, and it had taken them to a place that had allowed them to do things that had never been done and see things in a way that had never been seen. And that combination, whether it's on a small scale within your life or on the grandest of scales of exploring the universe, to me that's the most exquisite combination possible. So it's a magnificent experience. I hope that the technology that's good enough gets good enough that everybody here has a chance to fly in space during their lifetime. Thank you so much, Chris.